My name is Lizzie and I'm 14 and this is Lisa and she is 20. Our business is called Ellen Designs and we're the co-owners. So do you like working in the business? Yes or no? You do? Ooh, <laughs> she does. We've been running it for about 11 months. We sell more fashion forward clothes protectors for people who um, maybe have a disability. My name's Tanya Harris and I'm Lisa and Lizzie's mum. Lisa is very determined. She's very sweet, but she likes things her way. You know, she's very verbal, doesn't use spoken language and really tough. You know, she looks pretty fragile, but she's definitely not. My name is Ben and I'm 35 years old. I work at the Council for Intellectual Disability or or we call it CID for short. I'm a project worker. I help um, my work colleagues with co-designing. It's very exciting. Lisa went to an ed support school from kindy. So when she was three to, she was like 18, her whole sort of school life. The options that were presented to us before Lisa finished school, so prior to the NDIS were, you know, day centres and groups, you know, a couple of times a week or something. The assumption was that she wouldn't work. The idea of, of going, of Lisa going into a day program a couple of days a week didn't you know make me very happy it didn't seem like it would be particularly interesting or fulfilling or stimulating or I did um, work experience uh, at a local Woolworths that was when I was in year 10 and then when I was in year 12 I did work experience at a cafe I was lucky enough to get a job basically out of um, high school. In the family business, my dad owned uh, and ran a bookshop. One of the biggest skills that I learned was using a computer register and that's really helped me working at at CID. Lisa finished school a year and a half before the NDIS came in. Prior to the NDIS there wasn't a lot of choices but we started planning pretty quickly once the NDIS came to our area. We knew that microenterprises were something that could be included in NDIS plan. We weren't really sure how that worked. First what we did was contact Valued Lives, which works with people with disabilities who want to start their own businesses. The first step was doing the business plan and finding out, you know, how to get an ABN and like things like sewing, marketing, taking good pictures. The role that Lisa plays is mainly picking out which fabric she likes and which patterns and which like what she wants to post and she also models most of the things as you can see. My coordinator, the help with the NDIS, asked me if she wanted to go online and find jobs for me and I said, yeah, that's fine. And, and she came back to me and told me about this job. She helped me apply for the job at CID and as they say, the rest is history. I've been at CID now for three years. I've seen lots of benefits for Lisa in that, you know, she has to attend meetings, has I think worked out that she's got to contribute as well, which has been good for patients. And also getting out, selling stuff at, you know, markets and being at markets has been beneficial. She's getting, 
you know, better and better at making your own decisions. And I think as time has gone on, the support that I provide is probably less. I think people with disabilities would really want a way to support themselves. I think what Lisa likes the most about the business is getting to work with her family, having a lot of more money and um, more freedom in that sense. And also, you know, just being able to do something um, day by day. I like earning money than then getting money handed to me. And before I got the job at CID, I was only working one day a week and I thought, well, I'm not enjoying getting more from the DSP than from working. And, and that's why I'm glad now that I'm earning more money from working than I'm getting from, from the DSP. I think to parents that are feeling overwhelmed as their kids are getting to, you know, to adulthood, it's really to try to connect to other parents that have been through it, to find a good support network and you can take your time and see what fits and you can try different things like it doesn't, it's not going to be right the first time and it doesn't matter, that's okay. I think be really creative as well, you know, there's so many options out there now and, and really finding out what, what your kid wants to do or giving them options because sometimes you might not know and they might not be able to tell you. I think it's through meeting other people and seeing what other people are doing that work looks different for different people. Understanding the role of support workers and what they can play that they're not just there to do personal care but they're there to actually support you in your life and in what you want to do so helping you do things that you can't do. And my advice to young people find something that you're passionate about and write down little steps and eventually build up to working in the job that you may want to do. I know that when I got the job at CID, a lot of my family were really supportive. They keep on encouraging me to keep keep on going. If your son or daughter gets a job, to be supportive and encourage them to continue to work hard. Priorities for Lisa as she grows into young adulthood to keep her living you know a life that's really interesting and that does have the same opportunities that you know my other kids are having failing sometimes and succeeding at other times it's kind of I just wanted to be able to have all of those things.